Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeat.com. Uh, in an earlier video, when I was talking um, about you know potentially scraping my uh, uh, Burke Number Four milling machine, I had showed a book that I had bound, and it said that uh, if anybody was interested in that, uh, let me know, and if there's enough interest, then I'd be uh, I'd be willing to do a few videos on the subject. So um, this is the uh, first video in a series, small series that I'm going to do, and and hopefully this is helpful to people and not too much of a pain in the rump um, and if there's interest I'll I'll get a little bit more advanced as we go so I just want to let you know that I am NOT a book binder just like I am NOT a machinist and I am NOT a teacher um, but uh, I'm gonna do my best to uh, share with you what I've what I've learned uh, right or wrong um, and if there's a book binder out there amongst you that uh, says hey you really shouldn't be doing it or you could do this way better or that better uh, just jump in, in in the comments below and let me know. So the uh, two main sources of information that I'm using for my, the book binding that I'm, I'm doing is uh, the Craft of Book Binding by Manly Bannister, okay, and book, uh, Basic Book Binding by A.W. Lewis. Now, um, these books are pretty good, but I also want to uh, point out that there's plenty of resources on YouTube um, on book binding and and I'll try to uh, link those in as time goes on so um, the home shop we're kind of in a unique position where we have um, uh, some information that's available to us um, electronically uh, that's really old it's out of uh, it's out of copyright and it would be nice to be able to have it on paper and in the shop or on the bookshelf or whatever so uh, th while there are a number of these things available, um, I'll list a, a couple places down below, like Gutenberg. You can go to Gutenberg, you can go to Internet Archive, and things like that to get them. Uh, you're gonna—I uh, I will leave it to uh, your exercise uh, to find a um, a suitable source that you want to print. So what I'm going to use in this example is I have two. Hopefully, I can get over here and get them. Uh, where I work, um, I work at a hospital, and we have a um, we have a uh, EHR system, right, called Evident, and uh, Evident uh, has its documentation available for download in PDF format that you can uh, either read online or print. So what I've got here is uh, I've got the System Management User Guide, um, and I have um, another one. Called the enterprise-wide uh, schedule uh, scheduling user guide, right? So uh, these are the two that I'm going to focus on first. And um, the the first um, thing I'm going to do is uh, we're going to perfect bind this, but we're going to use a paper cover. So here I have cardstock cover and uh, two of these books, and I got more cardstock over here. That's what this is here. So. So you're going to have to have a source of material. So I would just suggest uh, finding a, a PDF document that you like. You know, it's 100 pages or whatever. Um, you know, print it out and just practice on that. And, and I've printed these out duplex. You can see it's printed on both sides of the paper for both of these manuals. Um, so that's what I'm going to use. Okay. So now once you have um, your document that you want to bind, um, you're going to have to have a few basic tools, okay? And these can be uh, homemade. Um, they can be, you know, uh, made up of most anything. You don't have to have any professional um, bookbinding uh, tools at this point. And I don't have any, and, and I've seemed to uh, get along well enough. Uh, one thing that you will want is a folder. Now, this is a, a 3D. This is my... Uh, a folder that my uh, son printed out for me on his 3D printer. They sell these on Amazon, but you definitely want to get a, a folder, a bone folder or something like that, uh, a nice stiff piece of plastic or something because uh, you will wear your fingertips out if you don't have something like this. And Like I said, these were just printed out on a 3D printer, uh, sanded a little bit uh, for smoothness, and uh, that works well enough for me. You're going to need some brushes, right? I have, here I have a small artist brush uh, that I use to uh, spread uh, glue. And then I have a larger paint brush here that I use to spread paste. Okay. And um, in addition uh, to the brushes, you're going to have to have uh, some PVA glue, right? Now, 
This is uh, Elmer's glue wall, you know, uh, like school glue. It's a uh, uh, PVA or polyvinyl acetate. And then there are, there are varieties that you can get from like the craft stores that uh, like here, this is an acid free PVA glue. And this is kind of really targeted toward uh, uh, book binding. But now if you're printing out a regular um, printer paper, chances are it has a certain acidic level and it's only going to last so long anyway. So if you have a project in mind that you want to last a long time, you want to make sure that it's printed out on acid-free paper, okay, which you can get at the office supply store, and you'll want to try to make sure you use acid-free glue. Now the reason why we use PVA glue is because uh, uh, this dry is flexible, okay, and, and that's really kind of what we want. We want our binding to be flexible so that it can be open and moved about without uh, the risk of breaking the binding. Uh, for the perfect binding, you're going to need some sort of th thread, coarse thread. Now I have this. I actually have several different kinds of threads, but um, I think that's the one that I used. Uh, here's one that's uh, a little heavier, you know. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make some saw curves in the back of the uh, or in the spine of the book, and we're going to embed these threads in here, this thick thread, uh, so that the pages have something to grip on. So. You'll want to locate some heavy thread. This is a crochet thread, I think, is what this is. Found it at the Wally World. Okay. Um, let's see. If uh, you want to add a bookmark or something like that, you want to get some ribbon, right? Uh, ribbon is pretty cheap. You can get that at the Wally World. Uh, you'll want some sort of uh, scissors um, and uh, some knife blades. Now, I I got one of these knives somewhere, but these are the replacement blades for it. But you'll you'll want uh, some sort of uh, razor blades to because uh, you can do a lot of trimming and cutting and that sort of thing as you put your book together. Okay, and um, later um, when we talk about there's another style of uh, binding that we'll talk about later that um, requires uh, what's called a signature. A signature is a group of pages. I don't know if you can. Um, see that or not but it's a group of pages that are sewn together you know folded up and what's called a signature they're sewn together and uh, have what's called a tape this is a tape and these are uh, generally how um, you know your uh, better books are, are bound up and made and we're, you're gonna find that uh, uh, you're gonna find that you're gonna uh, there will be books on the internet that um, you know don't lend themselves to uh, eight and a half by eleven or a four uh, or you you probably want to, um, you know, uh, a five and a half by um, uh, eight and a half or whatever, whatever half sheet of this is. And then there's some other things that you're going to want. To, but the biggest thing is that you're going to have to have a pair of boards right now. Uh, these are uh, these are actually from the backs of, um, uh, uh, you know, those uh, spring boards that... Uh, uh, clipboards. You know, these are the back of clipboards, and these are used to hold your book between between the boards, something like this, where they can be knocked up, and so we can get everything straight. And you'll see here that there's some lines on here where I'm going to make some, where we're going to make the saw cuts later. Okay, so you're going to need a pair of boards. I bought a pair of. Uh, of uh, clipboards, but you know any any stiff. If you can find some stiff cardboard or something like that, uh, anything like that will work just fine. And then finally, uh, the last thing you're going to need is uh, need a press of some sort. What's called a nipping press. And what I've done here is I've just got two pieces of three quarter inch plywood. Uh, they're uh, aligned in the front, and then I have uh, four holes drilled through with. Uh, some bolts and some wing nuts and then what I've got are I got different length bolts um, depending on how thick the book that I'm dealing with I just changed the bolts out probably a better solution would be some pieces of all thread um, but essentially um, we're going to uh, take the book we're gonna knock it up we're gonna pinch it down here in the in the uh, nip what we're gonna call this a nipping press right we're gonna nip it down in this press we're gonna make some saw cuts uh, into the spine of the book. We're going to rough the edge of the book up with a knife uh, so that uh, we'll take some glue. Uh, we'll put a layer of glue, we'll glue some threads in, another layer of glue, and then we're going to back it up with some uh, paper uh, 
uh, and or mull. Okay, so now the very first type of binding we're going to do, since we're going to use a uh, cardstock uh, cover, we um, we're, we're this is probably the easiest, simplest method to do it, and uh, we we won't be using uh, mull, or if we do, we'll only be using what we need, and we're going to back this with some cloth. So that brings the next um, thing that we'll need is um, you'll need some mull. Now mull is uh, just a thin cloth. You know you can see through it. Um, you can use gauze. You can use anything like this. But this is what gives the book its strength. So you can get this at uh, you can get it at Walmart. You can get it at, at uh, any fabric store like Joanne Fabrics or whatever. Just ask for some mull. Um, or you know just some lightweight gauzy looking um, cloth you can actually use gauze if you want and then finally you're gonna have to have some book cloth now book cloth is a cloth that is is uh, backed uh, with paper now I don't have any here because um, uh, you can't it, I guess you could buy book cloth but it's easier to make so what I'm going to suggest is that uh, if you go to the Walmart you can find uh, uh, like remnants right so this is a uh, one yard it's green 100 percent cotton right uh, here's one that's got a nice uh, print on it of some feathers right um, and then of course I have some of this blue cloth here that you see and um, you know I have some other I have some other cloth there's some that uh, looks like uh, it's Christmassy right here's one with eyeballs on it so you know any kind of cloth like that is fine whatever you want to cover your book in um, you know I find that solid colors or or uh, some print like this would be okay you know it all depends on how you want to um, um, uh, put it down so in addition um, to cloth you're gonna have to have uh, to make uh, uh, to make book cloth you're gonna have to have what's called heat and bond okay this is a uh, iron on adhesive right for uh, Material you find that in the in the material section of the store and uh, The heavy duty is better. This is a lightweight one um, Heavy duty is better, but basically you're going to iron it on the cloth and then we're going to peel the backing off and then uh, on to that glued backing we're going to add uh, We're going to add some uh, Tissue paper so you'll want to find some tissue paper uh, again in the you know present aisle or whatever the at your local big store will have this so I think that's uh, pretty much uh, everything that you're going to need of course uh, when we go to make the um, uh, it'd be a different video but when we go to make the uh, book cloth we'll have to have uh, an iron this is just a cheap twenty dollar iron uh, you want no water no moisture or anything like that so that's uh, something you'll want to get and let's see is there anything that I'm missing here uh, you'll want um, You'll want some, maybe some wax paper or some, you know, here I have, uh, uh, you'll have here we go, um, here I have some pieces of parchment paper. Parchment paper is nice to rub down on because the glue won't stick to it very well or at all, and uh, you can rub through it. You can use wax paper, anything like that. So that's a big pile of stuff, and, and, um, and I'll put a list here on the uh, end of the screen. A shopping list uh, and then uh, in the next video we'll start with uh, perfect binding a, uh, a book with a um, um, well I'll tell you what the next video I think I want to show you how to make um, book binding cloth right it's it's our book book cloth it's really easy to do I'll show you how to do that and then in the video uh, then the following video we will perfect bind a uh, paperback um, book there's two ways to do it um, and I'll talk about both uh, both of them are very simple and um, depends on the size of the book in our case the book uh, is is an eight and a half by eleven or full piece of letter paper or I think that's a4 and in, uh, in Europe so uh, oh and by the way one last thing you're gonna need a, a hacksaw uh, this is a little junior saw to cut the curves in the back of the book for the for the thread so hopefully I've covered about all the bits and pieces of tools that's gonna that you'll need uh, to do the job. Uh, again, I'll list them here at the end of the video, and in the next video we'll uh, start with uh, making some some book cloth. So uh, if you're uh, interested in this sort of stuff, hang around. I got a few more videos to do, and and they will progressively get a little more complex depending on on the needs. And 
and really depending on the interest of, uh, of what you guys want. So other than that, uh, hey, if these uh, videos are entertaining or useful to you or, or helpful, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. Um, you know, it takes a little bit of work to put these out here, and, and uh, subscribers are always nice, but mostly I really like the comments and the, and the dialogue down the bottom. So if you have something to say, please, please share it. Comment down below. So other than that, have a blessed day.